Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's look at word search. This is a pretty good problem and it's definitely very popular. So we're given a grid M by N with a bunch of characters or you could say it's a board and we're also given a target word and we want to look for this word inside of our board and if we can find the word, we return true. If we can't find the word, then we return false. And so within our grid, the word can be constructed any way, but it has to be either horizontally or vertically neighboring cells. So basically what we're looking for, let's say this is our board. We're looking for a path inside of this board where we can move horizontally, right? We're moving to the right, then we go down, and then we go to the left. So this is our path and we are looking for a word. So we're looking for a path that can make this word. Down here, you can see in the example, they give us a target word, A, B, C, C, E, D, and that's the word we're looking for. We're looking for a path, and we can find a path with exactly those characters. Therefore, we can return true. Now, the question you're wondering is, how can we figure this out? Is there a really efficient algorithm to solve this problem? The answer is no. There's definitely not a super efficient one. We just are going to go through the brute force solution, and that brute force solution is going to be back tracking. So basically, this problem is actually pretty intuitive, right? How would you solve this problem in real life if you didn't have any code? Well, you'd go brute force, right? Look at, look, let's start at every single cell. So we'd go through every single cell, right? Let's say this is an E, right? Does our word start with an E? No, it starts with an A. Now we have a C. Does our word start with a C? Nope. Does our word start with a B? Nope. Does our word start with an A? Yes, it does. So now let's look at all the neighbors of A and look for our next destination character. Our next target character is B, right? So let's look down. We don't have a B over here, this is an S. Let's look up, there's nothing up left, there's nothing left. Okay, to the right, we have a B, great. Now the next character we're looking for is a C. Are there any neighboring Cs? Not up, right? What about to the left? We can't reuse a character, so we can't reuse this A, but we wouldn't want to use it anyway, but that's just another detail, right? We can't reuse any characters. Down here, there's an F. That's not what we're looking for, but to the right, there's a C, right? Obviously, we can see that, and the next character we're looking for is a second C. You know, we could run through this, but it's mainly just brute force, right? We're going through every single position, looking at every single neighbor to see if it's even possible for us to make this target word. In this case, the answer is obviously yes. We have an E and we have a D, we can finish it up. So in the code, we're gonna be doing backtracking. So let me jump into that. Or rather, we're gonna be doing recursive backtracking. So we're gonna do this recursively, or in other words, we're gonna do this with depth for search so let's dive right into it. So one thing I like to do with these problems is just get the dimension. So I'm going to get the number of rows and the number of columns. So get the length of the board. We get the number of rows and get the length of the first row and we get the number of columns. Also, remember how I said we can't revisit the same character twice within our path? Therefore, we're going to need a variable or a data structure for our path. We're going to use a set to add all the current values from our board or positions in our board that are currently within our path to make sure that we don't revisit the same position twice within our path. But other than that, if you've seen any of my backtracking videos, you know I like to follow a formula, so I'm just going to be going through that right now. So I like to create a nested depth for search function within the root or the regular function because then we don't have to pass in some of the variables like the board and the word because this is a nested function. But we are going to have to pass in the position of the board that we're at, so two variables, row, column for that. And we're going to have to pass in a third variable, i, which is going to tell us the current character within our target word that we're looking for. So if we ever reach the end of the word, or if i ever equals the last position, so if I ever, if we ever finish the entire word, therefore we know we found the word, therefore we know we can return true, right? That's the good case. The other case is what if we go out of bounds, right? Out of bounds of the entire uh, board. What if row is less than zero or column is less than zero, right? Or what if row is greater than or equal to the number of rows, or if column is greater than or equal to the number of columns? 
that's also out of bounds. So, or let's consider one more case. What if the board, what if the character that we're at in our word, so word at position I is not equal to the character that we're at in our board. So board at position row, column so if this is the case if we're if basically we found the wrong character then we also uh, want to return false and there's one last condition we have to check what if the character or or what if the position we're at row column this tuple what if this row column position that we're at is inside of our path set what does that mean that means we're visiting the same position twice within our path we know all of these things that I've just listed, all these conditions are basically invalid. If any of these are true, then we have to return false because, you know, if we're out of bounds, we return false. If we see the same character twice, we return false. If we see a character that we are not looking for, we also return false. Okay, but once we're done with that, then we know, okay, we found a character, we found the character we're looking for, right? So what can we do? We can take our path and add the current position to it. So the current row column to our path because we found a character that we need. So now we're going to be continuing our recursive depth first search. And so we're going to be looking for the result of this depth first search. So we're, we're going to run depth first search, right? We're going to run it in all four adjacent positions. So what I'm going to do is say row plus one, leave the column the same and add one to I. We're adding one to I because we found the character we are looking for. Now we're going to look for the next character, right? So now I'm just going to basically copy and paste this a few times. So, so I copy and pasted it four times because we're going to look at all four of the adjacent positions. So let me just fix this up. So you probably see what I'm doing, but basically I'm saying row plus one, leave column the same, row minus one, leave column the same, column plus one, leave row the same, and column minus one, leave row the same. So we're looking at all four uh, all four adjacent positions. We're running depth first search on all of them. And if any of them return true, then our result is gonna return true. Remember, we only need to find our target word one single time. So if we ever find that word then we know we can return true so I'm gonna go ahead and return that result but right before I return that result I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning up so I'm gonna take our path variable and remove from it the position we just added to the path because we're no longer visiting that position right we're returning from this function called therefore we don't have to continue to visit that position inside of our path so this depth first search uh, f recursive function is always the main part of the uh, backtracking problems. Once we're done with this function, the only thing left for us to do is actually brute force, go through every single position in our grid and run this depth for search function on it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do for every single position, every single starting position in our board. I'm going to run depth for search passing in the row column, passing in zero for the position of I because we're always starting at the beginning of the word. And if we ever return true, if this depth first search function ever returns true, I can immediately return true from our function exists, right? I can just return true immediately. I don't have to wait. And if we never return true, if this goes through every position in the board and we never return true, then I'm going to have to return false out here because that means we did not find the word that we were looking for. So this is the entire function, actually. You can tell that it's definitely not very efficient, right? We're, we're running through the entire board, right? So what's the time complexity of that? Running through the entire board is going to be n times m because those are the dimensions of our board and that's being multiplied by the depth first search function right because we're calling that depth first search function every single time for every position in the board so the question becomes what's the time complexity of the depth first search function well the call stack of that depth first search function is always going to be the length of the word right because the word can only be so long we can only go through so many uh, characters for the word so that's going to be the call stack of it. Remember, we're though we have four different branches. We're calling the depth first search four different times. So it's really going to be four to the power of the length of the word that we are given. So it's going to be something like four to the power of n 
where n is the length of the word. So you can see this problem is not very efficient. So let's just clean this up. So this is going to be 4 to the power of n roughly, right? So it's not a very efficient solution. This is the rough time complexity of the problem. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. And I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.